Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on JoeCam. All right gang, so in the last few videos, whether it was the introduction to heterocycles or if it was just our, you know, more close introduction to Perol, Furan, and Thiophene, we're getting, you know, we, we saw some interesting properties and characteristics with that nitrogen containing, oxygen containing, sulfur containing five member ring, okay? Well, you might be thinking, okay, if we spend so much time talking about them, are we ever gonna learn how to make them? Well, if you were thinking that, and even if you weren't thinking that, we're gonna learn how to do it in this video. Before I kind of jump in, what I'm gonna do with this video is I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna show you the, the generic, like here's how you complete the reaction. Then I'm gonna go in depth with this mechanism because these are a little bit more, not that they're not exciting and cool, but this goes through an imine intermediate, so it's, it relies on chemistry we've learned in the past. There's a couple steps here where you kind of just like do a step and then it's like, okay, now that you've done this complicated thing, finish it off. So if there is a demand for the mechanisms here, you can either find them online or just let me know in the comments or shoot me a message. I'll be more than happy to add this to the video or create an extra video, but this will be the start of the show kind of, and then we'll do complete the reaction questions with all three. Okay, enough gabbing about what we're gonna do. Let's just do it. So, the Paul Noor synthesis. What's really cool is, so clearly, the products we get here, we can make a parole derivative, we can make a furian derivative, and we can make a thiophene derivative, right? So, the only criteria you need, so you just need this network of four atoms, and to bring back some more terminology, what you need is a gamma dicarbonyl. So, you know, I know we've used alpha and we've used beta, but just for some review, remember, from a carbonyl, as you go away, you can refer to this next, the first position is the alpha position, this is the beta position, then you just go down the Greek alphabet, this is the gamma position. So you need a gamma dicarbonyl. Why? Well, that gives you the four carbons that you need. You toss in the extra element that you kind of need, whether it be oxygen, sulfur, or nitrogen, primary amine here. And you get, you get a five-membered heterocycle out of it. This is aromatic, right? Because we're gonna be making these bonds, but the original four core atoms, carbons, are right there. Okay, so I just wanted to show you like, these are basically the same, right? Just your reagent changes on each iteration. Don't, please don't memorize all three of these. Please just know you need a gamma dicarbonyl, and if you wanna make it a sulfur thing, use peak, you know, if you want to rely on your gen chem naming knowledge, your diphosphorus pentasulfide, right? Or your diphosphorus pentoxide. Or if you want a parole derivative, you just need a primary amine and whatever R groups you have here, whether they're just hydrogens or carbon chains or whatever, they stick along for the ride as well. Okay, so we'll come back to these two for some complete reaction questions. But what I want to do next is get nice and cozy with the mechanism of how to do uh, you know, make a parole derivative, and we'll go from there. All right, gang, let's dive into the mechanism. Okay, so just did a simple parole derivative uh, synthesis, a simple polynor synthesis of a parole derivative, rather. So, yeah, we're just doing some uh, methylamine, right? Acidic conditions, we're going to take this uh, gamma dicarbonyl, and we're going to get our wonderful parole derivative out of it. How do we do this? So, like I said, this goes through an imine intermediate. Luckily, this is chemistry knowledge we already have in our noggins, right? So, the first step is going to be, and shudder if you remember, protonate the carbonyl oxygen. Okay, so I'm going to save me some space, save me some space because that's why I erased the title. So, I'm just going to protonate. So, in this very first step where we have H, then we'll, I'll use the rest of my board. We're gonna have, it's a bit obnoxiously large, but a pronated carbonyl oxygen. Then we're gonna bring the lovely methylamine in because this nucleophile will be attracted to the now more electrophilic carbonyl carbon. It's rearing to react. We will attack and electrons will kick up, okay? So we form a tetrahedral intermediate. So what I am gonna say, gang, is I've seen this mechanism kind of drawn two different ways. I'm gonna go with this one way because I think it's a little cleaner. It's what I've seen very frequently. 
Uh, if it varies, go with whatever is you know kosher for your class. Okay. So we got an OH up here, and then I have an N, an H, and a methyl. So in this step, whoop, I got a positive charge right here. Here we're gonna do our little proton shuffle. We're gonna do some things. I want this to stick around, so I'm gonna deprotonate this. I want kind of, you know, we don't see either of these carbonyls in our product, so I'm gonna protonate this carbonyl oxygen because I attacked here and I did my attachment here. I see that is all good and dandy. I need some connection here though. So to get that going, I'm gonna leverage my hydronium again. I'm going to have this carbonyl oxygen graph H+. That's what I want to leave. I'm going to propionate it. I want this to stick around. So I'm going to use my friend water to deprotonate here and dump electrons onto the nitrogen to make sure it sticks around. I think I can fit one more structure here. Okay, so what does that look like? I now have a protonated carbonyl on the left-hand side of my structure. Going to give myself some room. The methyl group, I have OH, and I have a nitrogen with a methyl group and a lone pair. What am I missing? Oh, that's a nitrogen. Wait, what am I missing? Oh, I am so sorry, gang. I forgot that H right there. That should have been there the entire time. I apologize. Got an H right here. I had an existential crisis. I was like, that doesn't have to full octet. Okay, so that's what we got. At this point, what we can do now, this is basically a repeat of step one. We kind of did the attack at this carbonyl, now we're gonna do the attack on this carbonyl. I'll attack there, electrons will kick up. So now this is gonna kind of be, we're gonna move this over here now. So now we have OH, and then there's my methyl group, Here's another OH, and now we kind of, you know, we, we do have nitrogen in the correct position. We've formed our cyclic requirement. Leave an H here, so plus charge. Okay, so yeah, that looks good. So now we kind of need to figure out how we get rid of these two and we form our double bonds, right? How does that work? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up. I'm just gonna have water, grab this right here, Dump the electrons onto nitrogen. Sorry, that bond to methyl is kind of in the way, but please know it does that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now this gives us, you know, we do have our pentane-ish derivative type deal, OH. Here's the part that I kind of mentioned during the middle of the mechanism. I've seen this done multiple ways. I've seen this done one at a time, but what I've commonly seen done in this mechanism is you protonate these two up to water. So again, we'll have a step where we'll have these, high, these OHs get protonated to water because we want them to leave, so we'll make them good leaving groups. Man, I'm bringing stuff all over the place. Okay, so here's kind of the brain blast part I was talking about. We have water. We have water. What I've seen have done here is you take these H's down low. You're gonna have some base. It's gonna be it's gonna be water. They each grab a proton. The electrons form the double bonds you need here for the aromaticity. And E2 like action, you drive these off. So it's like you get like a minus two. H2O's and you get your product. Sorry, my marker's dying on me a little bit. I'm gonna draw some something that's gonna show. You know what? We never give the pink marker the, the credit it deserves. Okay, that is our product. So again, if you if you differ in the proton shuffling required, like you know, just go with whatever is done in your class, your lecture, but I've this is how I've seen it done. So, it, and it looks nice, you know, you get like, you get airs going on, you get bonds forming, water leaving, it's cool. So, you can see that this fits the requirement of what we were talking about though, where I can even use X as, you know, any head, like, you know, whether it's oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, 
we got this going on, right? And in this case, we have an R group here, but it's like the two R groups over on the, the sides of the ring are methyl groups, cover bonds, our X is nitrogen, and that carries a methyl along with it. Okay, so this is nothing new. You guys, you all could have done this mechanism before watching this video. It's just, you know, an immune attack, but you don't fully drive off your OH, then you do it again. All chapter 17, you know, if you're going along with the Voldemort textbook, uh, you know, immune formation, carbonyl chemistry, then it's just acid-based stuff to get your aromaticity and form your pearl heterocycle. Okay, gang, thank you for sticking with me through the mechanistic part. Now we're just gonna run through some complete the reaction examples, which that's where I've seen this question pop up on exams. It's a complete the reaction question, unless I feel like you get this mechanism right here. But let me clean this up. We'll do some examples and call it quits. Okay, gang, let's crush these two examples and call it quits for the Paul Noor synthesis. Okay, so I hope you're realizing that the mechanism wasn't scary. These complete reaction questions aren't scary. The reaction isn't scary, but it is kind of, you know, unsettling when you see it for the first time. You're like, where did this ring come from? But let's take a look at these. Okay, so in this first one, we're clearly going to make some furan derivative, okay? And then this one, we're going to make some Pearl derivative, okay? But let's check out this one first. Okay, remember, this reaction is key on having a uh, gamma dicarbonyl. So what I always like to do is I look at my structure, I identify one carbonyl, and I get, okay, there's the alpha position, there's the beta position, and bingo, bango, bongo, it's bad gamma. There's the gamma, right? Gamma dicarbonyl, clear as day. So. What I like to do is I just know that it's it's between these two carbons I get a double bond. It's between these two carbons I get a double bond. These carbonyls disappear, and I shove my hetero, you know, my hetero, my atom, my hetero atom in there to form the ring. So I didn't touch this ring, the six-membered ring whatsoever. So I'm going to keep that, and I know it's these two that will form the bedrock kind of of my cyclopentane derivative-ish deal and because I basically drew these two and these two so I'm gonna draw my oxygen and I'll connect the dots because now I have a one two three four five membered ring put in my double bonds right there and my R groups are whatever attached to the carbonyls and those are just methyl groups bang bang okay this is our final product super simple okay so let's do it again down below, we have a parole type deal. And if you can see, there's my alpha position, there's my beta position, there's gamma, okay? Easy. So in this scenario where this one was kind of set up to like form a ring, what I like to do is just kind of adopt that classic template we're used to, this right here. So in this case, right, so it's these positions right here that are these positions, that's important to note. If what I like to do is, you know, straight chain in an aliphatic situation, I jump to the template and I just know, okay, so I have an ethyl group here, so I will just fill that in, ethyl. And then over here, I have an isopropyl group. So one carbon and then branch, branch. Then I just need to toss my amine in here, so it's be a nitrogen. My R group is the ethyl group. I have a lone pair, don't have to draw it, but I'm flexing for extra points. And that's right, tough guy, we're gonna box it in pink for emphasis. Okay, so I hope you're seeing that the Paul Noor synthesis is nothing to be scared of, only embraced. Obviously at a normal amount because it's organic chemistry, so we're not gonna be weird about it. So, gang, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I love y'all very much. Paul Noor synthesis. That's a wrap, and I'll see you all in the next video.